Hi, my name is Jared Gull. I work for Juniper Networks in the Education Services Department. And today I'll be sharing a learning bite on the Topology Independent In-Service Software Upgrade feature associated with the QFX 5100 series switch as well as the EX 4600 series switch. The agenda is we'll provide an overview of the feature and then we'll work through an example on a QFX 5100 series switch. Historically speaking, software upgrades meant some downtime on the device undergoing an upgrade. The upgrade caused the entire system to undergo a reboot, which impacted the control plane and the data plane traffic. This approach to upgrading network components forced the network to compensate for the topological failures as the system went down during the reboot part of the upgrade as well as after the system was upgraded and back up in service. Over the years many enhancements have been made to address this uh, situation, this impact when software upgrades were performed. Uh, chassis based systems came out with uh, the option for redundant routing engines and a number of software features um, were developed to help facilitate a smooth transition during failures and failover scenarios between redundant routing engines. The software features that help facilitate this are the graceful routing engine switchover feature, the non-stop routing feature, and the non-stop bridging feature. The problem, at least in the data center, is that not all devices are chassis based or have redundant routing engines and because of that they're not going to support in-service software upgrades. To help overcome that situation um, in the data center with top of rack switches, Juniper Networks has designed a new architecture on some of the switches including the QFX 5100 and the EX 4600. So the new architecture incorporates a host OS with a hypervisor uh, it's a Linux based operating system that includes uh, a hypervisor and then on top of that we run Junos OS in a VM. So on the left you see a master RE0 which is its own VM and this is what you would typically see in a, uh, a system uh, a QFX 5100 or an EX 4600 series switch. Uh, during the in-service software upgrade uh, a backup RE shown on the right in the form of VMB spins up and then spins up with the new target image and then a warm transfer of control of the PFE and uh, all of the state information is transitioned between the master RE and the backup RE. Once all of that uh, state transfer has taken place the backup RE becomes the new master RE and the old master RE ages out. So there are a, a few requirements uh, just like on a chassis based system a QFX 5100 or an EX 4600 series switch um, they have to meet these uh, requirements. Uh, again the software features that are required include the graceful routing engine switchover, non-stop routing and non-stop bridging and then of course you need to have access to the target image that you'll be upgrading to. Once all of those requirements are met you can initiate the ISSU using the command shown here on the bottom the request system software in service upgrade command and then of course referencing the package name of the image that you are upgrading to. Okay, now we're going to work through an example on a QFX 5100. Let's talk a little bit about the objective and the topology. Uh, we want to perform an ISSU on QFX1, that's the device shown at the bottom, uh, while ensuring little to no impact on transit traffic and protocol peering sessions on the connected devices. So in my environment I'm simulating some virtual, um, I've configured some virtual routers on a second 
QFX5100 device, QFX2. Um, I've got two routing instances configured, VR1 and VR2. Those two routing instances or virtual routers are connected through QFX1 using the interfaces shown there on the slide. And they have an OSBF uh, adjacency for area zero and an IBGP pairing session between them. And we'll do some verifications and show you where we're at there. Now QFX1 is currently running the uh, 13.2 X51 D15.5 version and we want to upgrade that using ISSU to the 13.2 X51 D21.1 version shown on the right hand side. So let's minimize that and we'll pull up our devices here. So we've got QFX1 and QFX2. So QFX2 again this is uh, the device that we've split into a pair of virtual routers. Um, so uh, we'll just kind of illustrate what we've got going on there. We've got VR1 with its respective interfaces and uh, protocol configuration and then VR2 with its respective interfaces and protocol configuration there as well. Um, let's just verify some state. Let's verify OSPF. Okay, so VR1 has a full OSPF adjacency with VR2. It looks like uh, we've been up over three and a half hours now. And then a BGP pairing session which is established and that's also been up for over three and a half hours, nearly four hours now. And then let's just verify connectivity using the ping command. So we're going to ping from VR1 to VR2 um, to VR2's loopback interface which is 192.168.100.2 and we can see that they're able to communicate using ping and we'll just let that ping operation run while we transition over to QFX1. So QFX1 again this is the device at the bottom this is the device that's going to undergo an in-service software upgrade. Remember that we have some uh, configuration requirements so let's move into configuration mode and we have to enable graceful routing engine switch over that's done under the edit chassis hierarchy so set chassis redundancy graceful switch over and then we'll enable non-stop bridging and that's done under the protocols layer to control non-stop bridging and then we will enable uh, non-stop routing and that's done under the routing options hierarchy so set routing options non-stop routing and one thing to keep in mind when you enable NSR or non-stop routing on a Junos device you must also enable commit synchronize which is done under the edit system hierarchy so let's do that now set system commit and synchronize. So with those configuration statements in place we should be able to uh, successfully perform an ISSU um, on QFX1. Let's just before we do that let's verify our current version and here we can see that all line items in the show version output are 13.2x 51 D15.5. Um, one thing I want to briefly mention is the bottom line item, the Junos host software. Um, that particular package is not upgraded. That, that represents the host OS and that does not necessarily have to match all the other packages, uh, the host operating systems likely going to be the same in different 
uh, versions. So it doesn't really matter if there's a mismatch there when comparing that host software line to the other line items in the output. Um, so again, once we perform the upgrade, you should see all other line items change except for that host software. Now, having said that, you can upgrade the host software package, but you can't do that with an ISSU. Um, that's going to require that the whole system undergo a reboot, not just the VMs doing their thing. So, uh, and I again, an ISSU is not possible if you force, and that's the command option you would use. You use uh, um, force within the standard upgrade command uh, syntax to upgrade not just all of the the other packages, but also the host software package. So. Having said all that and having met the requirements, we've got verification on the attached virtual routers configured on QFX2. Let's perform the ISSU. So that is done with the request system software in service upgrade. And then I've downloaded the target version to the var temp directory. So we'll reference the path of var tmp and then call on the jinstall image, which again is the d21.1 version. That's our target image. So here we've initiated it with that command, and the system will now undergo its uh, upgrade. I'll just uh, sit quiet here while we monitor the upgrade process, which is relatively quickly, especially when compared to some other devices running Junos. Okay, so after uh, approximately five minutes or six minutes or so, the uh, ISSU process should be done and you should be able to log back into the system. So you will have to log back in. So here we'll log in as lab. And here you see the version is now the D21.1 which was the target version. Let me issue a show version so you can see the full output. And so here again you see all line items showing the D21.1 version except for that host uh, software line item which is uh, what I mentioned earlier. So the upgrade is now uh, performed and hopefully, let's go back over to QFX2 here, we'll break the ping operation and here we see that 776 packets were transmitted during that upgrade process and 776 packets were received, so zero packet loss. So no impact to, to that transit traffic. And then let's just verify our um, OSPF adjacency. Yeah, it's uh, still up. It's been up over four hours now and verify BGP and it is still established and it's been up over four hours now as well. So that, uh, that concludes our demonstration and our learning bite. I hope you've enjoyed. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses, learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths, Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.